Welcome back. Under the patronage of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the celebrations of the Silver Jubilee of His Majesty the King's accession to the throne will be held tomorrow, March the 6th. On the occasion of the Silver Jubilee of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's accession to the throne, His Majesty issued Royal Order 16 of 2024 on the creation of the Silver Jubilee flag, which shall be hoisted on flagpoles from March the 6, 2024 until the end of the year in venues relevant to the occasion. According to the order, the Silver Jubilee flag shall be raised to the right side of the observer and the Kingdom's flag to the left. The BDF Commander-in-Chief Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa received a number of officers who graduated recently from military colleges and universities to take the official oath in the presence of the D Minister of Defense Affairs, Lieutenant General Abdullah bin Hassan al naimi and the BDF Chief of Staff, Lieutenant General Diab bin Sagar al naimi أتمنى لكم التوفيق إن شاء الله شرفيني أن أنقل لكم تحيات وتقدير سيدي صاحب الجلالة الملك المعظم قائد الأعلى القوات المسلحة وبالمناسبة هذه بعد إن شاء الله نبارك لكم بقرب شهر رمضان المبارك إن شاء الله الله يجعل شهر خير وبركة علينا وعليكم وقيادة الرجال مهمة مهمة سهلة في السلم وفي الحرب لازم تكونون قدوة لكل أخوانكم في تنفيذ الأوامر وإطاعة الأوامر الحق اللي تصدر إليكم الرئيس وتتوقع نفس الشيء أيضا من أخوانك اللي في أمرتك العمل في الوحدات هو أو في أي مجال آخر هو شرف كبير لأي عسكري في قوة الدفاع أخوانكم اللي كانوا اللي كانوا قبلكم في الخدمة أسسوا صنوف كثيرة في قوة الدفاع وصلوا إلى مستويات ولله الحمد مشرفة وطبقوها في السلم وفي الحرب وكانت نتائجهم ولله الحمد أيضا مشرفة نتمنى إن شاء الله أن إحنا ما ندخل في هذه المراحل في أغلب الأوقات لكن دائما نكون مستعدين لها ان شاء الله. فارجو منكم ايضا احترام بعد من تحتكم في الخدمه في عملهم ورقبتهم مراقبه صحيحه ونصحهم والاشراف عليهم. ومثل ما ذكرت في الاول قياده الرجال تحتاج الى حكمه تحتاج الى علم تحتاج الى قياده جيده. وانتم ان شاء الله قد هذه سمعة قوة الدفاع تميزت من سنين كثيرة. احنا مثل ما تعرفون الحين دخلنا في يمكن السنة ال 56 من الخدمة في قوة الدفاع. مرينا في مراحل كثيرة في عمليات وفي امور ازمات داخلية. نتائج قوة الدفاع ولله الحمد كانت كلها مشرفة. فارجو من الله ان شاء الله انه يوفقكم. نتمنى لكم التوفيق ومشكورين ما قصرتوا. The BDF Commander in Chief urged the graduates to translate their knowledge and experience into the ground as well as continue developing their field capabilities and honing their skills in various specialities required by the combat and administrative arms and units to serve the BDF and raise its status and implementation of the visions of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces and the directors of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. He affirmed that the theoretical information and field training received by the graduates would benefit them while serving the BDF, stressing that the BDF will continue providing opportunities for its affiliates to acquire military knowledge at prestigious universities of Bahrain and abroad. He added that the BDF endeavors to develop all its training, practical and theoretical aspects through conducting studies aimed at preparing commanders who are capable of shouldering responsibility and facing future challenges. He commended the officers for their success and their military careers. Senior BDF officers also attended the oath-taking ceremony.
The Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi received the National Security Advisor and Royal Guard Commander Lieutenant General His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad al-Khalifa. His Highness conveyed the greetings of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa al-Khalifa and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad al-Khalifa and their wishes of continued good health and well-being to the President and further progress and prosperity to the Egyptian people. President Sisi welcomed the visit of His Highness, noting the importance of developing cooperation. He praised the progress achieved by Bahrain in various fields led by His Majesty the King, stressing the continuation of joint work and coordination between the two countries. His Highness Sheikh Nasser reviewed the brotherly relations between the two countries, praising the Egyptian efforts to support security and stability in the region. The meeting reviewed various aspects of cooperation and joint action. The National Security Advisor and Royal Guard Commander Lieutenant General His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa arrived in Egypt and he was received at Cairo International Airport by Head of Egyptian General Intelligence Minister Abbas Kamil and Ambassador of Bahrain to Egypt Fouziya Zainal and officials. The National Security Advisor and Royal Guard Commander Lieutenant General His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa met with the Egyptian Commander in Chief of the Armed Forces and Minister of Defense and Military Production General Mohammed Zeki. His Highness reviewed the bilateral relations and various aspects of cooperation and joint action, expressing pride in the distinguished bilateral relations and deep rooted partnerships spanning many years of coordination and cooperation in all fields. The two sides discussed the means of bolstering cooperation through exchanging experiences in the military field. They also exchanged points of view on the most prominent regions and international issues. The Egyptian commander-in-chief hailed His Highness's visit, highlighting the depth of the bilateral relations. He affirmed the importance of cooperation between Bahrain and Egypt in all fields. He commended Bahrain's achievements in various fields with the directives and leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. The Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Isa bin Salman Educational Charitable Trust and Chairman of the Board of Directors of Tamkeen, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, chaired the Trust Board meeting at Rafa'a Palace. His Highness highlighted the importance of investing in the Bahraini workforce through diverse programs and initiatives aimed at providing high-quality educational opportunities for citizens. He noted that supporting Bahraini citizens' educational pursuit is a key element of Bahrain's broader development goals, led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Highness noted the unwavering support that the education sector receives from His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The board discussed topics on the meeting's agenda, the latest developments in the Educational and Quality Committee, an Investment and Asset Management Committee, and the strategic plans that contribute to the trust's financial sustainability to strengthen its role in providing higher education opportunities. His Highness emphasized the Isa bin Salman Educational Charitable Trust commitment to offering academic scholarships and to students in various specializations. These scholarships are designed to align with labor market's demand and enhance students' skills and professional and academic qualifications, positioning its recipients as the first choice in the labor market. On behalf of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Isa bin Salman Educational Charitable Trust and Chairman of the Board of Directors of Tamkeen, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, attended the Euro Motors 25th anniversary celebration which was held under His Royal Highness's patronage at Exhibition World Bahrain. His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman highlighted the unwavering commitment of Bahraini companies to delivering exceptional services within the automotive industry. He noted the pivotal role of the private sector in implementing quality initiatives to foster development, bolster various industries, and provide quality opportunities for Bahraini citizens. His Highness noted that the private sector drives national growth and supports the Kingdom's comprehensive development goals led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and supported by His Royal Highness. His Highness highlighted Euro Motors' commitment to providing quality customer experience that has been developed and enhanced over the years. 
The chairman of Euro Motors, Zayed Zayani, delivered a speech in which he expressed gratitude to His Royal Highness for his patronage and to His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman for attending the celebration. Zayani highlighted the company's most notable achievements and its commitment to providing quality services. He added that the progress witnessed by Euro Motors is an outcome of the dedicated efforts of the company's employees who spare no effort to improve services for customers. Zayani underscored the ongoing support of Euro Motors employees and the importance of maintaining a work culture that nurtures loyalty and dedication. After that, a presentation was held which revealed his the history of Euro Motors company. Euromotors unveiled the dealership's new brand identity, which was followed by a charity auction. The charity auction featured unique items from Euromotors that proceeds going to the Royal Humanitarian Foundation, which reinforces Euromotors' commitment to corporate social responsibility. The Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Khaled bin Abdullah Al Khalifa inaugurated Bahrain Smart Cities Summit 2024, which is organized by the Ministry of Municipalities, Affairs and Agriculture in cooperation with Smart Way Consulting. Sheikh Khaled bin Abdullah stressed that Bahrain has taken advanced steps towards creating the digital infrastructure in its cities to keep pace with the goals of the comprehensive development process led by His Majesty the King with the follow up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. He added that the strategy of the telecommunications, information, technology, and digital economy sector 2022. 2026 comes in the framework to provide an advanced global level infrastructure in a way that reflects positively on the concept of smart cities locally. He pointed out that the Ministerial Committee for Development and Infrastructure Project has mandated Municipalities Affairs Ministry in cooperation with the relevant authorities to prepare a comprehensive strategic project to implement smart city standards. He stressed the importance of holding such events to strengthen the Kingdom's position as a center for smart cities regionally and internationally. The Minister of Municipalities Affairs Engineer Wa'al Limbarak said that this summit has a great importance as it falls within the specialized conferences that Bahrain embraces in the field of artificial intelligence and the transition to smart cities. The minister highlighted the opportunities benefited from the session during the summit. The Deputy Prime Minister honored the sponsors of the summit and the government and private agencies that won the summit awards. After that, the Deputy Premier inaugurated the exhibition, which includes more than 10 sections from various ministries, government agencies and private sector institutions.
The Interior Minister General Sheikh Rash ibn Abdullah Al Khalifa attended the public security exhibition for security and police services. The event showcased security projects, scientific achievements, and the launch of new projects, reflecting the visions of the Interior Minister towards the development process, according to Advanced Systems. The Minister expressed appreciation to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces, for the support towards the efforts of the Interior Ministry in protecting the security and national achievements in a way that improved the competency and performance of the police and the development of the security system. He hailed the follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, to enhance security performance, competency and preparedness. The minister highlighted the exhibition's projects that meet the approach of transforming from conventional to modern policing based on tremendous IT development. He thanked the team for showcasing the projects with their services that are provided with competent, accurate and fast performance. The event commenced with the speech by the Chief of Public Security, Lt. Gen. Tariq Al Hassan, in which he expressed hopes for the project to achieve the aspirations of the Interior Minister for Bahrain's police to be a distinct modern organization that adopts smart technologies and modern methods. He noted the significance of the instructions of the minister to protect the national identity and traditions as the core for society, security through community partnership and prevention and protection programs by police directorates and the governorates and the community police. The exhibition included a documentary on managing the projects of the Public Security Presidency based on scientific principles and standards to achieve the strategic goals of the Interior Ministry in line with the Economic Vision 2030 and the Sustainable Development Goals. Al Hassan noted that a total of 28 out of 41 projects have been completed and 95 projects will be implemented, stressing that the projects vary from compatibility building and development, reinforcing preparedness, digital transformation and technological development. The Interior Minister was briefed on security performance levels of the police directorates regarding security and community services and accomplishments. The Directorate of Information Technology and E-Systems showcased new digital transformation initiatives, including a virtual operations room, the unified criminal system Nejim information panel, and the internal e-platform for the Information Technology Directorate. In the same context, a project for evaluating the police stations were highlighted along with introducing a guideline to assess client satisfaction at the police station, the e-evaluation system and the Mawaid app. The General Directorate of Criminal Investigation and Forensic Science made a presentation on performance levels, developments and achievements. Then General Sheikh Rashid received a copy of the Unified Procedural Guidelines for Security Centers and Police Cases that aims to unify police procedures in dealing with cases to ensure performance accuracy and the protection of the rights of citizens and residents. He honored some organizations involved in the projects and toured the exhibition that included screen presentations. The minister launched some projects including a smartphone app to receive cases and complaints and benefits from the Interior Ministry's services. The ministry has launched the Digital Transformation Project for Cases by referring cases between various directorates of the Interior Ministry and the Public Prosecution for Fast Procedures and a project for the National Ambulance to use motorcycles for swift response and better services. Then the Interior Minister toured areas outside the exhibition and was briefed on modern vehicles, equipment and technologies.
The Minister of Education and Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Higher Education Council, Dr. Mohammed bin Mbarak Jum'a, opened the work of the International Conference Open Innovation and Digital Transformation, which was held by the Arabian Gulf University with the participation of an elite group of innovation experts, academics, innovators, and decision makers in the government and private sectors from around the world. The minister praised the initiative of the university to organize this important conference in line with the pivotal scientific role it has played since its inception. He explained that the conference represents an opportunity to learn about international trends and advanced technologies, exchange experiences and qualitative practices, and interact with experts and specialists in these fields. The president of the Arabian Gulf University, Dr. Saad bin Saud al fayd appreciated the care and support that the Arabian Gulf University receives as it is one of the most prominent joint Gulf projects by His Majesty the King and all the leaders of the GCC. An implementation of the directives of the cabinet, the Ministry of Industry and Commerce intensified field visits represented by the inspection department to enhance oversight of markets and commercial stores and inspect them to ensure the availability of goods and services in the required quantities. The Assistant Undersecretary for Control and Resources, Abdelaziz Al Ashraf, stated that the Ministry of Industry and Commerce ensures the presence of inspectors to perform their supervisory roles in the morning and evening periods throughout the week. He stressed that the inspection department visited a number of large commercial stores to review view the existing equipment ahead of the holy month of Ramadan. Al-Ashraf added that inspection campaigns and field visits constitute a safety valve for the safety of the commercial environment and for consumer protection. He stated that there are a group of repeated field visits, the central markets and stores, with products that are in high demand during the holy month of Ramadan. Bahrain International Airport received two distinguished awards with the Aviation Sector Achievement Awards 2024, which are the Best Medium-Sized Airport Operator Award and the Aviation Sustainability Award. The two awards were presented during the Aviation Sector Achievements 2024 Awards Ceremony, which was held in Dubai. The two awards embody the efforts made by Bahrain Airport Company to provide an advanced world-class airport experience, taking into account the environmental impact and contributing to creating a more sustainable future. The Kingdom of Bahrain attaches great importance to education as it is the main gateway to achieving the aspired goals and keeping pace with various changes and developments in many fields. The education sector in the Kingdom is taking rapid steps through constructive cooperation between the public and private sectors to achieve the principle of equality and social justice among all segments of society. Bahrain has taken significant steps in developing education, most notably the adoption of the National Strategy for Education, the development of an action plan, and with the follow-up of its implementation, which has enabled the Kingdom to have one of the most advanced educational systems in the region, which has also achieved significant and sustainable progress and development in the use of information technology in education, through which it has achieved several achievements, including UNESCO's announcement of the launch of the eighth session of the UNESCO King Hamad Prize for the use of ICT in education. The Ministry of Interior Show Jumping Team achieved first place in the grand competition of His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa Show Jumping Championship, which was organized by the Royal Equestrian and Endurance Racing Federation, held at the Military Sports Federation Field in Rafa. The event is under the patronage of the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, and Honorary President of the Royal Equestrian and Endurance Racing Federation, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and in the presence of the children of His Highness Sheikh Nasser, who witnessed the tournament and crowned the winners. And in Arab and international news, the Emir of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Mish'al Ahmed al-Jabar al-Sabah, arrived in Abu Dhabi on a state visit to the UAE. The UAE President, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed al Nahyan, was at the forefront to receive the Emir of Kuwait upon his arrival. During a meeting, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed and His Highness Sheikh Mish'al discussed relations between their countries, particularly in the economic, trade, investment and development sectors. Saudi Arabia's permanent representative to the United Nations, Abdelaziz Al Wasal, said the kingdom rejects attempts to undermine the role of the United Nations Relief and Works Agency in Gaza, where Israel has been waging a war that has killed over 30,000 people and displaced over 80% of its population. Al Wasal added that Saudi Arabia was keen on continuing its support to UNRWA, warning of attempts to eliminate its role, and underscored that it was essential for UNRWA to keep working so that it can help ease the suffering of the Palestinian people.